The home inspector just kind of said, oh, don't worry about that. It's just previous water damage. What are they, stupid? That's like stupid. Ah, oh, damn, this is why I didn't want to take off stuff. That sucks. This whole floor right up. It's a can of worms. Every time I do something here, it just leads to something else. Holmes, I need you here, bud. I got to get you to look at this. Shannon thought it'd be a safe bet to buy a 26-year-old townhouse. Not too old, have a good track record. The home inspection appeared to go well, or so she thought, but now she's faced with a lot of problems. I'm gonna make it right. My sister had uh, moved out west with her family and decided that they wanted to come home. She had asked me if I could do her a favor and uh, go look for, at apartments for her because she was so far away. And I just got an idea. I just said, you know what, why don't I just buy a house and we can kind of all live together and it'll help me pay my mortgage, and at the same time, you guys will have a nice place to live. So it was just sort of a win-win situation for everybody. There was just something about this house that I loved. Like, the backyard, I really like it. There's a sliding door that goes from the kitchen to the backyard, and it's right across from a playground, so my nephew could go and play and stuff like that. So there were really a lot of things that I, I liked about this house. My home inspection, I thought, went really well. Everything kind of just looked cosmetic, and I thought, you know what? I can save some money, and I can do some renovations in a couple years. I can kind of live with the ugly kitchen and the ugly carpet, and it wasn't a big deal to me. The home inspector was very nice to me. He was very kind, but I don't know that he actually checked everything as thoroughly as he should have. Hi. Janet. Mike, nice Mike. to meet you. Nice to meet so you. Much for coming. It's cold out. I don't like yeah, it. Come on. I understand there's a few problems. There's quite a few problems, yeah. Well, it's a cozy little place. Yeah. There's that a hole in the ceiling. ceiling. Yeah, there's a big hole in the ceiling. <laughs> Looks like you've got some leaky plumbing. I had only been in the house for a week. I was standing in the kitchen, and I could hear drip, 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 and I'm like, where is that coming from? So I kind of looked around, and then I looked up, and sure enough, the water's leaking, and then it kind of starts leaking quicker and faster, and I just kind of stood there. The first thing I thought was, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to rip that whole bathroom apart. You could tell it had been patched already, so the home inspector just kind of said, oh, don't worry about that, it's just previous water damage, and he said it's no big deal, because the upstairs bathroom had been renovated. I read that in the report. Yeah. It seemed to be an old problem, yeah, not a new yeah. problem. You got a plumber in here, didn't you? Yes, I did. And he was a plumber? Yes, well, he said he was. He said he was. He cut into the ceiling, and he had a look at it, and he looked for a leak, and he said, I don't know where this leak is coming from. Let's go upstairs. All right. I just felt really, like, defeated, because here's this guy saying he doesn't know where the leak is coming from, and he refuses to fix it. So that was even more frustrating for me. This is uh, a back split, eh? Yep. Lots and lots of levels. <laughs> Very nice. Up to you. Well, it's looking good. You didn't put this in, right? No, no. This was um, a renovation that was done by the previous owner, but I don't know if necessarily they did a very good job. There's three main areas where a bathtub can leak. The drain, mm -hmm. the overflow, Okay. the shower head, but not just the shower head, but oh. the shower head up here, there's Teflon tape in behind it, so it's one, two, <laughs> three as one. Okay. And the other two would be the cleanup. I drain. always thought it was the overflow. So I have the right tools. I'm actually going to run a snake camera downstairs up through the hole. I want to see him behind the tub, never mind looking at the leaks. Really, the last thing I want to do is pull that tub. There is our dryer duct right there, which runs back up out through the garage. Um, buggers. So this is the old dryer yeah. line, right? So the guy thought it was so easy. So someone said, let's run a plumbing <laughs> pipe out there. Now all of a sudden, I've got this house, and I just don't have the resources to fix all these problems. So I will take you into the master bedroom where we just discovered um, some mold. It's the first area, a window or a door from outside, because that's going to be the penetration points for rain, for okay. snow, for weather. So we do have a little bit of surface mold here. That's definitely something that the inspector 
could have looked at or should have looked at. Was the baseboards there? No, they were not. So there was no reason why he couldn't have really noticed that. If you look, it's there. And if an inspector is looking for that, they will find that, absolutely. All right, so here's the infamous basement. Infamous basement, I like that. There's a window behind this wall that has been drywalled I over. I read that in the report. Yeah. Did you ask any questions? Well, Did he look actually, further? the home inspector was the one who noticed it first. We were down here, and uh, we were just looking around, and he said, well, that's weird. There's no window down here. And I said, yeah, that's kind of weird. And he's like, hmm. Then we looked up and saw this vent. There's nothing coming out of it. Oh, that's cold. Yeah. The home inspector did kind of wonder why there was a vent where there shouldn't have been that wasn't um, connected to the ductwork in the house. Um, but he was just kind of like, well, maybe you should ask the homeowner. So we have the furnace room. Yeah. OK, so we have steel framing. As soon as I see the electrical, yeah. you got issues with electrical. Like, that's absolutely no. There's Key. no grommet there whatsoever. If we're using any type of steel studding, in this case, it's a steel floor joist, yeah. there's holes drilled for electrical. Mm -hmm. A grommet is the plastic protector that slips in that hole to stop the wire from actually scraping against the steel. OK. If that wire wears through and touches the metal joist, this whole ceiling can become electrified. Now, if the ductwork's touching that, the plumbing's touching that, you touch it, you're going to get a shock. These are things I'm going to point out right away and say, that's an issue. Okay. You need a licensed electrical contractor in here to address this. The home inspector should have caught this, but I did not read about this in the report. So, okay, okay. Oh. this is what's going on with the window. So what do we have here? Gas. Yeah. We're not allowed to have an opening window or an exhaust within three feet of this meter. All right, they closed the zone. There's, a, I see a little bit of some type of foam insulation. But the window's open, mm -hmm. right? And it's just allowing all that. That's why that wall was so cold. So as far as the window, there's no way that I'll get to open that up then? Uh, uh nope. The no, I'm not even allowed to because of that gas. OK. That is really something I definitely would have liked to know before I moved in. Yeah. It kind of ruined that whole um, investment and in purchasing your first home. Like, it kind of ruined the whole, you know, excitement of it. Because now, all of a sudden, I've got this house and I just don't have the resources to fix all these problems. This is enough for now. I'm gonna grab some tools. I'm gonna do a complete scan of your house. Lots of stairs. We take care of our tools. This is a very expensive tool. This is the camera that actually gives me a thermographic reading. I'm going to have to find out why that's so cold there for an adjoining wall. My guess is that somewhere in the attic, insulation is missing, and a cold, cold draft is going down that wall, which it shouldn't be doing. Look at the insulation. I mean, we see insulation in the wall here. There is no vapor barrier. You see the dirt on the insulation? That dirt shows that we have a lot of air movement in this attic. Wood's fairly dry. Here we have the stack from the furnace. And look at this. That would explain the cold zones that I have down here. No wonder it's, it's warm up here. I have no cold breath at all. What is it, minus 15 degrees Celsius outside? That's how much heat loss is up here. So let's talk about R value. R value is a measure of thermal resistance. The higher the R value, the better the insulation. Building cold requires an R value of 40 in an attic. I'd love to see 50 or more, but you know, that's, that's me. This insulation here, this is an R12 insulation, this yellow stuff right here. We have an R8 giving us the equivalent to an R20. It's scattered, so we're not even close to an R20. And that's not good enough. The thermographic of the exterior of this house shows all the areas where there is heat loss. As far as I'm concerned, that sucks. I'm going in to fix it. Talk about money going out the window. In this case, money's going out the ceiling, out the roof. All right. I can already feel the cool difference just stepping down into the basement. Now, this is where the window is. And right, right there, you see that cold spot right there? That's going to be where the duct line is in that window area. Right at that point, 9.6 degrees Celsius. As I scan around the, where the window is, we have a temperature change of 3 degrees in the area. And that's understandable, because if you remember, the window on the outside was opened, and the ductwork went out at this point, and there was spray foam that was filled that wasn't 100% perfectly filled there. 
And that's why this area is catching such a much lower temperature to this point. And that's, you know, for three degrees at the two points, that's a lot of temperature. Celsius, three degrees. Just wanted to, I looked at this earlier, and I see a crawl space. There is our dryer duct right there, which comes through with a plastic flex hose, which runs back up out through the garage. Dumb buggers. And then along the front. Like, why do it this way? I'm gonna have to look further into the garage at that point. Now, the home inspector did let Shannon know the dryer duct line should not be running in the garage and going out to the outside wall at this point. The reason for that is because of the car. We're going to actually pull back the fumes inside. So it is up to the homeowner to listen to that advice and act on dangerous things. This is dangerous. Electrical is dangerous. Fumes are dangerous. When it comes down to your health, you know, this should have been addressed. All right. That's the wonderful window. Hey, there you are, Mike. Damon. How you doing? I'm doing good, you? Good. You always call me on these cold days? Well, it's not so bad now. It's actually <laughs> even colder this morning. It's minus 27 this morning, oh, you're but you were at the other one. I was inside. What's wrong here? What is going on with that window? <laughs> the inspector that inspected this house actually said, there's a window closed up in the house. You so know? he caught it? But what he didn't catch. The gas meter right beside it. Yeah, it's supposed to be three feet away from the window, right? Yeah. Any intake to the house. And it's got to be a fixed window. It and can't you call that closed out? Is that closed off? I can't even tell what that is, but I <laughs> see it from the inside. I don't know what's going on there. I want to measure the steel frame. We're going to give them an exact measurement. Yeah. Make sure you tell them eighth of an inch all the way around, OK? OK. We're going to do a fixed window. OK. I also see we have a, uh, is that a pipe coming out of the old? Well, that uh, drives me insane. Which... <laughs> <laughs> OK. So what was here? What do we see? I see an old vent. Yes, so this is the old dryer yeah. line, right? So the guy thought it was so easy. So someone said, let's run a plumbing <laughs> pipe out there. We'll run a plumbing pipe out yeah. there, and not the, one of the new ones that are yeah. really good. And let's run some <laughs> concrete around that rather than... <laughs> Done. So what's this line then? What, what vent is this? Okie dokie. Uh, let's start with... Insulation in the attic. Let's start from the top down. Yeah. Um, I want you to bring in Alex. We'll just add the blown in. I'm happy with that. Okay. We want to make sure we have proper ventilation from the soffit up. In the corner from the, the furnace that goes up is the exhaust line that goes through the attic. It's completely open and all the cold air is driving down because cold air pushes low. Yeah. Fire rated insulation around that duct line. We have all kinds of grommets that are dried out and, and not good with the metal rafters here, and the wires are being pinched tight against it. Okay. We also have aluminum and copper in the panel. I want a two thumbs up from Frank on the electrical. Okay. The window is right here, okay? There's what the window is. Feel how cold that is, eh? Just feel that. Well, there's nothing but the window back there, isn't that it? That is real cold. Yeah. Okay, that one spot is real cold. And now, I think the fan is there. Uh, have them confirm we have enough airflow out of this register. So okay. have them do balance the house. All okay? right. So bring Martin in, mm -hmm. fix the plumbing on the tub, make sure that through the hole in the kitchen we get enough insulation on the back wall and then behind the tub as much as possible, repair the hole. All right. First bedroom up the stairs, she calls it the master bedroom. Underneath the window, take a look, even if you gotta use your snake camera to see one, if we have mold, two, if we have moisture in that area. If okay. we do, open it up, okay? All right. But let's surprise her by fixing up the house and painting it. Whole thing? Yeah. Ooh, okay. So insulation in the attic, let's paint the house, let's fix the plumbing, let's fix the electrical, let's fix the HVAC. Excellent, I will press the button when I need you, okay? I'm done. Okay, man. Your job. It's just starting. See you later. Okay, man. Now we're not sure if it's the overflow, whether it's the spout, whether it's the tap, something's leaking back here. Where's the window? <laughs> wire is so tight to that metal. Look, it's already actually pierced the line. And I just thought, uh, what have I got myself into? What have I done here? Uh, let's go inside. Uh, we're going to start a little bit of demo today. It's three stories. I need you guys to uh, protect every floor, every cupboard, every piece of carpet, OK? Ooh. Nice. Take it right back. Oh, yeah, perfect. We have our trap. You get some hot balls. Look at this. It's not panic. 
Here we are. Hey. How nice. are you? Good, man. Yourself? Good, good. Thank you very much for coming by. No problem. Hey, Adam, how are you? It's a tub. And it's a leak. It could be the spout. It could be coming in from in behind the wall, which be I got to show you that bathroom. You're okay. going to see why this is going to be a real pain in the ass. How accessible is that upstairs? I'll show you. It's not. <laughs> OK, so the other problem is here is they cut structure. You see that? I noticed that, yeah. I have to fix that, OK? So we're going to have to deal with that, too. And I got to bring you upstairs and just show you what we're dealing with. And you're okay. going to have a lot of fun with this. All right. <laughs> So I'm thinking it could be leaking from here, it could be leaking from here, it could be leaking from the overflow. So we'll deal with that. And also, beautiful. Feel that? You get some sound. You get some sound effects too. You get some sound effects. What I like to do is, uh, you know, um, fill it up all yep. to the top. I want to recreate the scenario yep. of, of the flooding or, or the leak. Have one of my guys downstairs to look at where the water is coming from. Yeah. Feel it, touch it, you know, uh, poke with the flashlight and, uh, and you know, just literally try to get to the bottom of it as efficiently as I can without doing any damage. Thank so. you. Okay, the point is, I don't want to touch this whole bathroom. Okay. I really don't want to if I don't have to. We did find traces of mold in the master bedroom, so I have Carlito opening up underneath the window so we can inspect it a little further. Damon! Oh, you don't have to yell, man. I'm right here. Sorry. Let's go. Cool. Ready, ready to open it up. Okay. Ready? Nice. Okay. I think it's coming in through the window and it's just traveling down the plate, and that's why we have mold down there. I bet you anything that this slopes down, and that's why you're getting more mold there than anywhere down here. Okay. Take the casing off, open it right up to the window, okay? Come a little further, though, because I want to see what's happening here at the cold zone, okay? All right. I brought in the troops. Guess what we're doing? Uh, demo in the basement. I want to take down this ceiling. I want to take down this wall, OK? This whole back wall. Well, what do you think right off the bat? <laughs> Look at this furnace. It probably was a humidifier there one time. Yeah? It's just leaking? Yeah. I'd like you to take a good look at it. Tell me if it needs to be updated, whether it needs to be clean, the filters. I think we're also going to do a duct clean duck through clean the whole here. place, yeah. <laughs> we're looking to reroute, obviously, probably out through the back somehow. And we'll disconnect for now and take a look. So can I just show you the garage real quick? And yeah, you'll have a good laugh at that. That's our dryer pipe. Genius. Like, who the hell would do that? You're probably getting some leakages. You notice where it's coming through the wall? Yeah. There's nothing sealing it. Right. So that's open right into the inside. OK, so a really good reason to actually rerun this uh, as, as quick a route as possible, right? Get it out of the garage, get it out of the danger zone, bring it back into the house and out through yeah. the back, probably, right? Carlito, what did you find? Oh, I can tell right away. Oh. You have a leak here. I also got a leak right here. Lots of mold loose in this corner here. Yeah. Nice black fungus. Big pods. That and is definitely. Um, it looks like it was following down the uh, two by four stud. Leak into here. Well, there's nothing we can't clean up ourselves. There's no need to call in the remediation people for a little bit of mold like this. We'll just do a, a wipe down with it with some soap and water and maybe a spray. Let's get this bagged and out of here. Uh, don't open it up on the way out. Right in the bin, okay? Okay. Hey, I heard you might have found what the problem is. Yes. Uh, well, I've spent a little bit of time here. Obviously, yeah. I poked a little bit of holes. So I found a, oh. a newspaper going back to uh, 2007. So we can find some interesting stuff here. We have a newspaper, what, three years ago? Yeah. Uh, and it's nice. uh, this whole area is soaked. Uh, yeah. Now, I what I've done is process of elimination, right? Uh, it's not coming from the overflow. It's not coming from the drain. Yeah. It is coming from the tub. The tub itself? The, the tub itself. It's coming from the far corner. Um, I've been getting a lot of water accumulation on the subfloor, and, and, and water has been spreading all over this place. That makes no sense, man. There's no crack in that tub. There is. You saw it upstairs? Yeah. Let's, uh, let's go upstairs. I'll show it to you. OK. Uh, that's not good news. Damn. I see. Right. <sighs> good find. Option one is uh, uh, seal it. Yeah. Um, and then do the tests again, find out uh, and make sure that this is the only problem. Or option two is to pull the tub 
and install the new one and start from scratch. My option is to pull this damn tub, just eliminate the problem altogether, all. give them a regular shower, take out this whole unit, yeah. give them a tub, shower, get it back to, to normal here. I, I hate these things anyway. In my opinion, yeah, I like that better. Yeah. Because that's like, loose anyway. I don't like that. And if you take a look at this, this is what they use to hold this. Okay, well, this is what I was talking about. So there are other issues here there besides this issues. hole. Yeah, there are, we would have to deal with those sort of separately. Yeah. But if you're going to pull the top, then this whole assembly will come out and then we can address everything all at once. You know what happens when I pull this tub, right? I got to lose this tile. I start losing this tile. I got to lose all this tile because yeah, I doubt I'm going to match this gonna, unless I have a, like a, a time machine. Um, I'm pulling the damn tub, man. Okay. I'm just shocked. Like, I, I don't think that I would be able to ever get this fixed properly, ever. Why is the exhaust fan in the window and it's closed up? Yeah. We need to make sure we wrap these pipes right along. No copper touches steel, OK? Yes. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So it's absolutely necessary to take this down, I And think. again, someone's done some electrical, no grommets whatsoever. Yeah. What are they, stupid? That's like stupid. Yeah. That's just like, this is steel. Steel. The Sharp edges. It. Yeah. Did you grow? <laughs> no. You're getting taller every day. I, I'm, Am I I'm getting shorter? I'm getting older. I'm shrinking. shrinking. I'm looking up at you, man. <laughs>
here looking at the toilet. So when the toilet came out, I'm looking at my subfloor. My subfloor is completely rotted out. So it's been leaking for a considerable amount of time. The tub's been leaking, so I now have rotting floorboard. I take this out. How do I do that without removing tile? So I'm now removing tile here. Do I stop there? No, I can't do that. I gotta start taking them off here, which means I have to pull the sink at this point. Everything else we've touched here turns to crap in my hands, right? Every time I open something up, we have to fix it. We have to keep going. One, two, three. Something as simple as pulling the toilet. Now I gotta pull the floor. Look at the floor. Look at the subfloor right there. It's completely oh. rotted. I mean, the more I pull down here, it just keeps getting bigger. And I've got two weeks left on this job. Let's gut this bathroom today so we can actually freaking fly on it. Nice. Oh, beautiful. Ah, oh, damn, this is why I didn't want to take off stuff. You're right already. Unbelievable. Let's see if this is live. Ah, oh, of course it is. It's it's a can of worms. Every time I do something here, it just leads to something else. Look at this. Look at this. Oh my god, loose two by fours. Can you imagine framing like this? With tiles on it. Look at this. Holy f Look at this. Can we cut it up there? What are you thinking, buddy? You know what I'm thinking? I need five minute break. Okay. Let's uh, clean this up, take five. Let's get my head back in uh, gear here. I'm gonna get, make a call. Well, I'm a little frustrated. Holmes. I need you here, bud. I gotta get you to look at this. It started with a water leak. You know, that's an easy fix, you think. You go behind a wall, you have to repair the copper. It leads me to pulling the tub, it leads me to pulling the tile, it leads me to pulling the floor. It leads me to a bathroom gut. It was supposed to be a copper fix, hopefully. It's now a bathroom gut. All right, see you soon. You can repair that, right? Of course. How do I frame over this? Look at this right here. Look at that. It was just a leak. It was just a leak. Everything else we've touched here turns to crap in my hands, right? Now uh, you have uh, demoed it. Yeah, I demoed it. OK, so it's going to be a little tricky. I was thinking about this. Uh, we have a lot of stuff in our way, right? So I yep. wanted half inch off the wall for spray foam, I want it to be tucked in behind, right? So when they spray foam this, you have enough of a gap that we get a full thermal break on this wall. So Frank, just the, the three main things that I just need you to check out is an overall of the whole house. Duh. Obviously the panel, because uh, of the fuse box, and we want to see if it's overloaded. And obviously the grommet issue down here, because 50% of these are missing grommets. Yeah, you can see here, on this side here, there is a grommet, which is good to see. Yeah. Another one on the other side. We're missing one here. Yeah. It's actually come out. So uh, it is there, but as you can see, just wear and tear, old age. And they are brittle, so we yeah. might as well replace all of them at this point. That's down what here. I would do. You see that piece that's already starting to fray away because yeah. the, of these sharp edges. This wire will rub against these holes and wear through the nylon and then into the actual cable. Once you're into the cable, well, you've got these beams that will liven up. Now, I did notice some aluminum wiring as well. Yes. And we have a fuse panel that I'd like you to take a look at. And I just want your recommendation on whether you want to change it, what we okay. have to do here to make this place safe. OK, so basically what I just removed is a 20 amp fuse, and that just turned off a bedroom circuit. All these blocks here should all be 15 amp. If you've got 20s or 25s or 30s, what that's saying is you most likely have an overloaded circuit, it kept tripping, and what you do is you bought a bigger fuse. The wrong thing to do is buy the bigger fuse. A bigger fuse will overload the circuit, which can cause an electrical fire. We have overloaded circuits in this home, so it, it'll make more sense just to put in a brand new panel at this point. God. Yeah, it's all soft and molded. You think the wet. toilet's leaking? No, I think it was just trickling in, I following don't. the wood. You think so? It's soaking know. wet. It's, uh, 
You know what? Lose the bulkhead. Wow. Sick mold. Hey, like, look at that mold. Look at that mold. Oh. Wow, that's a lot of staining. So you can see that toilet's been leaking for a long time. I'm not gonna actually touch that. Carl, can you put that in the bag for me, please? Such a wimp wearing gloves for this. frame over this. Look at this right here. Look at that. That is crazy, man. So, you know what I want? This whole floor right up. I hate scabbing on other pieces. Just take the whole floor up. Nice. Beautiful. We're replacing the joist that's been cut out. Structure's been cut out here and here. And this is just floating. You can see this. Well, we have a tub sitting on it. We also have a toilet sitting on it. This is a major piece of structure that should never have been cut out, so we're gonna bring it back to what it's supposed to be. I'm gonna laminate another two by eight on this side and another two by eight on this side, and I'll tie it back into this piece, and there'll be so much structure holding all this weight that I can walk away happy and put my floor down. I got some plywood. Sometimes I forget about the basement. The bathroom has now become the main focus. So now, you know, my attention has been upstairs all day. I almost forgot about the basement. So when the spray foam guys came in, I was like, oh yeah. Alex's guys upstairs actually doing blown in insulation. They're giving me about 14 to 15 inches uh, and just bring it up to an R50 up there, which is going to be more than fine. They gave me baffles so that it can all breathe in there. Uh, they don't want to cover the soffits, so they've actually given me room for the soffits so that everything can breathe, let everything circulate and actually go out our vents. We put a secondary lint trap on this system. Uh, every dryer comes with a lint trap. What it does is the customer or the homeowner will never have to clean this pipe um, past the dryer or going to the outside. Um, everything will get trapped in here. The only thing they'd have to do is clean from here down. And that side of the wall is going to be a finished ceiling. You'll never get to it. You'll never clean that pipe. Um, so that's the reason for this secondary lint trap here. I put safe and sound bad insulation. So we're just trying to stop the sound from all the plumbing or muffle it and, you know, try and bring that sound down a bit. And uh, I'm just drywalling and trying to finish it up. So I need this finished as soon as possible so Carl can get a coat of mud on this. And then, you know what you're doing, my friend? Muddy? No. You're going to scrape this whole ceiling. Okay, I know this is going to be a real pain in the butt today and it's going to be time consuming. So the faster you get this done, the faster you can start this, which I'm sure you're just going to race at it. Oh. However long it takes you, that's how long we're here today. <laughs> this is gonna suck. And the trick to mudding is you're throwing it on to cover it. You can put it on thick, but what you have to do is you have to put it on, you have to scrape it on really tight. The tighter the better because you're not putting on compound to sand it off. That means you're wasting money if you're sanding it off and you're wasting time, right? Plus you're getting everything dusty, it means more cleanup. So the tighter, the thinner, the faster it dries, the less you have to sand. Stan's actually uh, tiling the bathroom, which, you know, pleases the hell out of me. Uh, it means we're finishing the bathroom. That's the one I was most stressed about. When I was pulling my hair out, I told Mike, he told me to calm down. Uh, <laughs> I calmed down a little bit. The homeowner has really a nice countertop, just the color doesn't work with what we're kind of doing here. 
So what we've done is we've cleaned it with an abrasive cleaner. We've sanded it. We're going to prime it with a shellac or alcohol-based primer, which sticks really well. It gets lots of bite. That's the most important part of painting countertop ceramic tiles is your primer. Um, so you want the adhesion. Then we're going to top coat it in oil-based melamine paint. We're just giving it a new lease on life, and the homeowner's not even gonna know it's not a new countertop. Towel bar's up. Is that four feet? Uh, just a little more. That's like six feet. That's not six feet. <laughs> She's gonna be jumping for that. She could do pull-ups on that, maybe. Whatever. You know what I that's want? I do want that a little lower, my friend. I'm sorry. Are you serious? Yep, that's why I said four feet. Four foot seven. This is why I say these things. You, however, originally you said right here, and that's what I went with. I don't really like it. I'd like it a little lower. Shannon's here in two hours. Mike's here in an hour. We're done in half an hour. Bennett. Hey, Mike. How you doing, last man? Last minute things. Last minute things. Looking Just catching good. up. Yeah, is that the right time? If I like to level up. No, for of course not. Oh, it looks good. Happy? Yes. It looks brand new. All right, let me see the bathroom. All right, let's see. Look. Looks good. Whoa. Later. Yeah, Whoa, this look is at this. Shannon's new bathroom. You know, it was closed off with that three piece, and now that you've yeah. taken out the bulkhead, it's actually made it bigger in here. I think she's gonna like it. I'd like to see the basement before Absolutely. we go. Absolutely, let's go. Thank you. So we do have a new window. We have a new window because I had to for the condo board. Aesthetics I, on the outside. I agree, let's not yeah. close off anything and that's that's their call. Yeah. So we, we did a film on the window. Yes, we did. We did a textured glass on it. Okay. Uh, I spray painted it black just in case there was any way you could see inside it. So it just looks like a normal window with a dark room inside it. Let's bring her in and take let's a look. Let's look You did a good job. Thank you, the team did. Thank, Thank you. you. How you doing? Good, I'm good, how are you? Hi Shannon. Hi Damon. Welcome back to your house. Thank you, thank yeah. you very much. She's been working really hard. Yeah, I bet you have. Everybody has. Yeah. They uh, stayed until I think 10.30 last night and the past few nights quite late. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's it's not brand new, but it's clean, right? It, it smells just, clean. It smells clean. I can, yeah. Well, amazing when you paint a place. Oh, I know why. Eh? Now we didn't okay. paint the whole place. Okay. We might have, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Anything you guys did is awesome, so. Let's start down. Okay. Oh, wow, the color is awesome. All new paint makes yeah. uh, such a new... No, it feels so warm difference. down here. I don't know if it feels warm because it actually is warm or if it feels warm because of the paint color. It's know? actually warm down here. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, talk about warm for a second. Damon had to rip down the whole wall. When I took the wall down, basically we had strapping on concrete. Okay. You had no insulation in your walls, and that would actually allow a lot of cold air to come in, as well as the window leaking. A little bit of insulation here and there. They stuffed newspapers as insulation, and it was leaking through the fan. And we never did figure out what it was for in the first place. Brought in Alex. Now, not only did he insulate upstairs, yeah, he, we'd use wall tight eco. So he sprayed the wall. Mm -hmm. So now that makes hey. it nice and warm. I'm just so excited right now. Like, I'm just as happy and as excited as I was as I was walking through the front door. Like, I think it's just gonna last for a really long time. The bros also actually had to fix all the gas pipes down here, because there was elbows that were no longer allowed as a gas line. And okay. if we're gonna close this back up again, we need to address that. So okay. they did do that. Okay. Solved all the issues with the uh, natural gas. Okay. The HVAC down here. Now the electrical. Frank coming in being very upset, just like I was, oh. so that we had issues with possibly energizing all the steel structure mm -hmm. in here, which leads to touching ductwork, yeah. which leads to touching copper, because okay. all of them were touching. Frank and his guys have replaced every single grommet in the basement ceiling, and then they re-ran the wiring so there's no way these steel joists can become electrified. He had a brand new panel. I see that. <laughs> that now is that so was awesome. important. 
That was important. Frank is really good at what he does. And he made sure that everything was safe to aluminum. So when we have aluminum wire, which is okay. safe, okay. we want the proper breakers. Okay. We want the proper AL switches and receptacles. So all through your house is all brand new switches and receptacles. So don't let anyone change them because okay. they are AL. And AL. that means aluminum. Okay. We no longer have that duct work running from the dryer right out <laughs> there, just working oh, its way the through little, the, the crawl yeah, space, the which I found, yeah, the and that's yeah. all been removed. The bros actually give you a lint trap holder. Okay. So right above your dryer, there's okay. gonna be a little box, you can clean that out so it doesn't actually, you know when you get all the fluff yep. coming out of your mm -hmm. vent? Mm -hmm. That won't happen anymore, okay? It makes sure that we don't fill the line that exhausts yeah. house. Exactly. Okay. You know a fire can start from that, right? Yeah, I know that. Yeah, so, so when you took out the old dryer line, was it really bad? Like, oh, it was really bad. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things that were really bad, but yeah. that was just one. Did you find any socks by any chance? Cause like I seem to- That's <laughs> these were yours? <laughs> the guys did so much work like behind the walls with duct work and electrical and plumbing and just the whole nine yards and the fact that it looks amazing you know cosmetically at the same time is it's a really really nice thing you painted the cupboards yeah. <laughs> they're not <laughs> like that nasty green anymore uh, what the cup oh you mean the countertop oh well oh, oh the countertop you did you paint that yes how do you do that Craig is, uh, he's a special guy, man. He came in, he painted your whole house. Damon gave you new handles on the, all the yeah. doors, new hinges. I feel like I'm actually in this top. decade now. I'm not in the 80s <laughs> That's what anymore, I said. It's really cool. I brought you back into this century. Yeah. It's new. There's no hole in the ceiling anymore. That's oh, there's not awesome. at all. Everything was so different throughout the house. And now everything kind of just flows like it should. And it looks nice. And there's not like pieces missing here and there. Like everything's complete. Oh, this is great. You knew you were getting a new tub. Yeah. You knew we were gonna pull it out. David pulled out the bulkhead, but then he knows he had to gut this wall. Okay. And he started pulling the toilets and realized after yeah, the floor it's came a up. That, toilet. that toilet was about to pop right through the floor. That floor wow. was completely rotted out. We had to bring oh it right back. Oh my gosh. So you got new tile. Kind of looks that pretty looks slick. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Does it look bigger in here? Yes, it does. It That's looks a lot better. because the bulkhead's gone, right? Yeah. You got a brand cleaner. new sink, brand new taps, brand new cabinet. Very nice. Mirror, lights. I love the tile. I love the color. I love everything about it. It's a nice bathtub, too. And you only have one hole in that bathtub. It's your dream. And that's the one that's, that's supposed right. to that's be right. there. That's yes, right. that's right. It's the right one. There's so much weight that's been lifted off my shoulders. Just like walking through this house now, it feels like it's my home. And I actually feel like I don't really... Like, I, I don't have to worry anymore. Oh, so you have, so a, you have a bedroom that I'll move into. So oh, we man. end up actually pulling down this whole wall because we okay, did have issues wall. with insulation. We did have okay. some minor water issues from the window coming mm -hmm. in, which were addressed. This is definitely the best house, the safest, the warmest, the best house in the neighborhood. The house only looks cleaner, smells cleaner. It really does. Yeah. It's about the functions of everything mm -hmm. we fixed. The electrical, the plumbing, the gas, the HVAC. That's the really important stuff. Like mm -hmm. the really, I, I'm learning from this whole experience that the most important things in your home are actually behind the walls. It's and not what you see, it's, it's what you don't see. It's what you don't see, absolutely. <laughs> These guys really care about people and they care about people's safety and well-being and everything. And so I really, really appreciate everything that everybody's done. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Give me a freaking hug. <laughs> Yay! This is the best part, eh? That's how I get paid. Does anyone ever hug you? Uh, yeah, I am. The, the, you're first. Here we go. <laughs> there we go. You know what? Maybe I should just take this right home. Anything. <laughs> you want to take a little breather here or relax in the tub with me? I can't really relax right now. <laughs> One, two, three. Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. You're working. <laughs> I want this place done in half an hour. <laughs> Keith and Caitlin, first time homeowners, doing the right thing. Call in a home inspector. They don't know what they're looking for. They want to buy the right house. They want the right advice. Question is, did they get the right advice? It's obvious the house is old. You can see by looking at it. The homeowners thought the house was good. Something's wrong with this house. It was missed, it's not in the report, and I've gotta come in, I'm gonna make it right. We bought this house because when we came in for the first time, uh, 
Kaylin sort of fell in love with the with the main floor. What really struck me was the nice finishes, the dark hardwood floors, and the beautiful kitchen. I'm more of an analytical personality, so I tried to refrain from the sort of love at first sight type thing. One of the things we like to do is uh, cook together. One of the great things about the neighborhood we moved into is it allows us to really spend time together doing uh, the sport that we love, playing tennis, uh, playing golf together. During the home inspection, the, the home inspector did note some sort of minor issues. He noted that there was some issues with some of the flashing and around the chimney, but it was a really minor issue. Once we got the okay from the inspector that there was nothing major wrong with the house, we were ecstatic. This whole experience was surrounding our wedding and our coming back from our honeymoon. This is our, our first place together. It was move-in day, everything was falling into place, couldn't be happier. We had our satellite installer come out the next day and told me that he wasn't able to mount the dish on our roof because the sheeting on the roof is completely rotted. I thought that the inspector's job was to point out all of the major issues. I felt that he missed a pretty big issue with the roof. Being our first time buying a house, I maybe let my emotions take over a little bit and let my guard down a tiny bit. The problems that we've encountered have definitely added a little more stress, knowing that it's expensive to replace a roof. After spending all that money on our wedding and our honeymoon and, and the down payment on the home, uh, it really didn't leave a lot of extra money for things like a roof repair. <laughs> you must be Keith. I am. I'm nice. Mike. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet Caitlin. You, Mike. Hi. Pleasure to meet you. Well, come on outside. It's a nice day. It's spring. I got my boots on. The problems are outside, obviously. So we have uh, a few issues, do we? We do, yeah. We moved in and found out there were a couple issues with the roof. We had a satellite installation that sort of went a little sour. I but... heard he could not attach it. Yeah, he couldn't get it into the, the sheeting, I guess. The home inspector, did he mention anything about how many layers of shingles are up there? Not that I recall, actually, at all. I didn't the, read it in the, the report. Uh, the inspector just went on the roof, came down, said there were no major issues, and uh, sort of went about his way. That I read, no major issues. Let's take a walk around the side of the house. What I'd like to do first is just a visual with you guys and then step into the real stuff because I'm here to help fix it and make it right. So first is the visual with you guys and uh, trying to determine a few issues that have been missed and see what I have to do later to take things apart. But you can see right there on your front porch, you can see how rotten the wood is. It's visual, it's right in front of me. I'd say there's at least three layers of shingles on that. That was not noted. Okay, let's take a walk around the back, please. Sure. Now, this is an addition on the back, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's sort of a... I did not read that in the report. Siding is not a good job, whoever did it. Verbally, I want to hear what he said. You know, he watched it through the house. What did he say about the outside? He said that on the roof, there was a little bit of a, an issue with the flashing. OK. I knew there were some things that were going to have to be done, but uh, I, I was for sure confident that we could absorb those costs. Originally, he was supposed to be here for two, two and a half hours, I was told. Um, when we got here, my real estate agent told us that uh, the previous owners requested that we only spend about an hour, an hour, 15 minutes, because they'd be entertaining. So it took about an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, the, the flag should have gone Make up. Make it at quick, that point. right, and get yeah. up. Yeah. Uh, bad move. So you were present, you were with them the whole time? Keith was. I wasn't uh, able to get the time off work. Okay. Well, all right. Um, I, I did read in the paperwork that there's no access to the attic. Yeah, no attic access. Okay, you know what, instead of guessing, it looks like I'll be getting on my ladder for sure. We have a very, very low pitch. It's a nice product. It's not the finished product. This is the underlayment, and it uh, really needs the granulated layer, much like the shingles over there. That's not in the report. The inspector should have caught that. Well, what don't I see? Vent. During the inspection, everything that was caught was really downplayed in a way that was like, ah, you know, there's, there's this issue, but that's, you know, a really quick fix. He said, now that I think about it, um, checked out the roof by walking on the roof, but the slope was too high, so he couldn't walk on the roof. They dropped in this template about the slope of the roof being too steep and limiting the inspection, but when I got here, he was walking around on the roof, all over the roof. Hmm. So. And there's no problems. Yeah. It scares the <laughs> hell out of me. This is not the greatest sign. This was cut into what appears to be 
cinder block, a poured concrete corner. Don't ask me why it's a poured concrete and cinder block here. What do I do with it? How do I pull all this out? Do I go get permits and make a proper door to the basement? Do I convince them to close it in? You can see right there on your front porch, you can see how rotten the wood is. It's visual, it's right in front of me. We're excited about understanding the full scope of the problems, but at the same time, fearful of what might be found out. He mentioned that we'd probably want to replace the uh, overhang here. On the, replace on the it? You mean remove it? Sorry. The slope is wrong, there's no doubt about that. What you don't want to do is make that water come into the house. The problem is, is the way this is sloped on each side to set up for the stairs, it just runs the water right down. I mean, it's going to leak definitely from this point coming in, get in behind the siding, in behind the wood. He noted to replace the door. Yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez, OK. Uh, I'll look further into this. Hmm. Do you hit your head in here? I do. You should. Yeah, yeah. I do. Is this ever weird how low this is? Yeah, absolutely. We want to watch the duct work in here, too. Yeah. Somebody has removed the blocks to this area here, which pulls out the structure above. It's the first thing I notice is that floor joist is cut. Because we would have had bricks there, so why open that up? Did you do this barricaded? In January, we were losing a lot of heat down here. We can see the gasket sticking in there just to help block it off. Was that you? It was us, yeah. We, we wanted to fill the gaps in. The other day, after a big storm, we had a little bit of flooding down here in the basement as well, through the door. There's, there's the signs in the water yeah. right there. So just right here. Yeah. Do you want to keep this door? Uh, not particularly. Yeah, that's definite. But I think it's a lot more than just replacing the door. Did you stuff paper in here? No, I didn't. A lot of this plumbing has been done wrong. This is a vertical D. They put it in a horizontal position. It does not work this way. It is incorrect. The water will come down the drain and hit the bottom of this T, where it should be a Y to direct it down. If they've done it here, where else did they do it? Is it behind drywall anywhere? Is it attached to anything anywhere? Is it, is it under the floor there? And then I'm pretty damn sure that there's no vent. Now, in the report, it said, and it's the first time I've ever read it in any home inspection report, that he recommends to have your drain scoped. Uh, for example, if you had uh, tree roots going into yeah. a weeping tunnel around the house. Did he talk about this? He did, he did mention that during the home inspection. Did, have you had that done? We haven't had that done. Why? Because uh, I have to back him on this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just something that we didn't do. Right you have now. a clean out right here. Yeah. Okay, that's an old clean out. I can tell by looking at it, it hasn't been opened in umpteen years. We're hopeful that at the end of this experience, we'll be able to sort of get back on track with what we originally imagined with this home. So we've been renovated. And this is really ultimately what sold us on the house. The finishes on the main floor here. We absolutely love the kitchen. Any issues with the sink, the plumbing? Any issues at all in the kitchen? Nothing. No, nothing. We well, your drain's done. wrong. And that's not noted in the report. This is a vertical, not horizontal. And the two lines tie into each other. This one just fights for this one. But it looks good. You're buying by illusion. Now that I've just walked through, I haven't even done anything yet. How do you feel? Uh, terrified. <laughs> terrified of what you're going to find. So let's just smile a bit. I have to. I'm going to go get my tools. And uh, I'll see what I can do. Okay. Thank you so much, Mike. I'll let you know, OK? Meeting Mike was, was fantastic. He was thorough. He took a lot less time than the home inspector did, but he's also scared the crap out of me now. We're told if we have a roof problem and basement entrance issue. I walk through the house. I damn near fall over. Everyone's missed this, including the home inspector, structural, electrical, HVAC. Never mind these other little things. Improper corners, nothing but water penetration. We can see the brown shingles underneath the green. We have one, two, three, four layers of shingles. And look at the wood. Holy crap. Every time you add a new layer of shingles right over the old one, the load gets heavier and heavier on the structure. Now imagine it doesn't breathe underneath. Eventually, the structure will rot. That roof's got to be pulled apart. stupid. I did better work when I was six. I have never seen wood stairs in my life leading to the basement. Having the metal underneath it, look at this. 
talk about using metal to cover things up. See, I can do that, right? Because this is no longer a home inspection. This is a home's inspection. Now I start to open it to see what's wrong with it. No wonder it was so cold. The earth is really just crumbling at the bottom of this. We don't want wood touching ground unless it's at least pressure treated. This is pressure treated. This is not. There, right? It's covered up, right? Do I go get permits and make a proper door to the basement? Do I convince them to close it in? Good question. I can see the supply to the toilet. They just went through the baseboards. On the plumbing on here, we have no trap. Really slow draining. The roof is wrong. The plumbing's wrong. There's no ventilation. I see issues with structural. It's going to be an awful lot of money to fix this. Found four layers of shingles on the Oh, look at the wood underneath it. OK. OK, so what does that mean? Rob. Yes. New roof. Strip the roof, check yeah. out the sheathing. We do know there's a minor leak from the chimney coming in, so that needs to be addressed, and I want an update on what he's recommending for the roof. Okay. You know, we can see that the old instal brick, which is the siding, which is the asphalt shingles on the side of the house, they've gone over top of that. That's probably something that the homeowner should uh, question that was not brought up by the home inspector, by the yeah. way. Actually, there was many things not brought up by the home inspector. Oh, God. Yeah, okay. this is like one hell of an eyesore. Now, what's the smartest ruse? To pull all this off? Fill it in. Fill it in. What I don't know yeah. is where is the vent pipe for the bathroom here? We have a shower, we have a toilet, we have a sink, we have a washer and dryer. Probably wouldn't hurt to scope the drain at the bottom of the stairs to determine where it is. Personally, I don't think it's vented. It gets worse. <laughs> Limbo time. Yeah. All right. Just do a little, a little sumo squat. That's what yeah. it is. It's like, it's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, All right, come on. Now, this door is just, like, ridiculous. There's daylight. That's daylight. Once this is closed off, yep. we're going to have to come up with a, a way to pick up the slope. Look at that. It looks like you had an idea. Hmm. <laughs> Somebody pulled out the foundation wall, which was a pickup to pick up this, which was cut. So there's the plumbing line that leads out to underneath the addition and where the vent goes, no one knows. Thank you. Thank you, man. Let me know. I will. Thank you. OK. This is actually crumbling. This foundation is going. I, you should not be able to do that. Meeting Mike was fantastic. He was thorough, but he's also scared the crap out of me now. We have one, two, three, four layers of shingles. I would have wanted to have known that if I was buying this house. Where the vent goes, no one knows. Mike's giving me a big job. I have plumbing to deal with, electrical. I know I have a basement walkout to do at this point, which is pretty straightforward. My biggest issue is going to be the roof, and I think Steve's here now. I'm just going to go take a look. Stevie, you some good news, bud. Uh, not so much good news. No? We got multiple layers. There's three layers of shingles and a layer of the original cedar. Four layers. Four total. layers, codes two. Really, this is going to be the worst area for any type of wood rot. Right. Um, the full extent of it, I don't know. Worst case scenario, resheating this entire area. Right. There's some obvious uh, leaking around the chimney, but it, it's really more of a maintenance thing. And then there's the lower rear flat, which, yeah. uh, which needs some work. So. And so on, and so on, and so yeah. on. Yeah. What we have here is a not very well primed metal at drip edge. Because they torched directly to a wood substrate, even though they primed it, they were probably very scarce with the amount of heat that they used on the material. So it never got a proper bonded. The problem is you get the cracking in the material, splitting of the seams. We're going to just start from scratch, pull all this membrane off, and start right from the beginning. It looks like we're dealing with 28 inch on center. It's the way they used to build these, right? They, in their day, it was just a porch. We got a lot of rot. Yeah. You know, over oh, the years. It's just dry rot. I dry think, rot. isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's got to come out. Okay. 
So Adam, yep. uh, look at what we're dealing with here. It's a bit of a mess. Put a rafter in between each one, okay? I want you to come with a board right across here. Instead of trying to figure out this angle on that pitch, yeah. bring one straight across. Give yourself a straight piece so you can tie right into it there, okay? All right, no yeah, and what am I going down to on that end? Oh, I see what they did. Yeah, that's okay. I can cut mine flat. Absolutely, because that's there. structure under there, right? Yeah. Let me give you some more paint. Oh. There you go. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thank you. Basically, what we have here is our, our mechanically fastened base sheet protective board. Uh, we're installing our first ply of membrane. It's torch applied. You see uh, Cormac heating the material with a torch, creating an adhesion between the base and the protective board, which we've already installed. And then we finish that with a granulated cap sheet. Well, it's unfortunate the inspector missed the first thing he, uh, you know, he walked under as he walked into this house, totally missed it. This roof needed to be redone immediately. So Adam has restructured this thing beautifully. He's actually put joists every 16 inch on center and he's blocked it, glued, nailed it, used tongue and groove plywood. This is the way to do a roof. Now you can just have Steve do a nice and water shield on this. I'm happy. I can work my way inside. How'd it look? It was actually a bit of a surprise. Uh, first thing I noticed was obviously there was a problem with the slope on the on the kitchen drain. Yeah. There was a there was a dip here in the basement. My concern is uh, because I don't know how the pedestal sink is connected and the shower and how all those plumbing fixtures yeah. are arranged. You know, it's safe to say that this thing is not vented. Then second thing I noticed was uh, the kitchen upstairs. I don't have a vent. The kitchen is not vented. The kitchen is not vented. You got to come up with some kind of solution here. I do not want to pull cabinets if I don't have to. Another alternative is to install a wall vent. Okay, so I know you're going to take this out right now. What, do we have a sag in it? Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have adequate slope. Right. Um, I'll re-slope it just to make sure it's, uh, it's, it's better than code. Well, it's time the structure came down. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life anyway. Uh, it slants back into the house right below a window. As I guarantee there's water leaking into this house. You can see the foundation actually crumbling down there. That's the whole reason why we're here to fix this. Ready to go? Right out. Well, I guess people in jail would wish they built foundations like that. Um, one thing I'm gonna have to give uh, the inspector credit for is actually catching this back here. This was an absolute mess. I mean, he did mention that there was gonna be heat loss out of here, that it was built improperly. This is actually crumbling. This foundation is going. I, you should not be able to do that. Let me open this up a little bit. I just wanna see how far this actually, it's, it's crumbling here. So how far does this go? Yeah, look at this. Doesn't look like much concrete at all in this wall. No, I think they thought it was at one point, eh? But it's saturated right through. I can actually feel moisture on that coming through. Well, first thing we gotta do is get some short posts up here to take the okay. weight. We're gonna have to pour a new concrete footing here. Okay. We're gonna have to bring it right to the corner and okay. return it to just past the stack there and then build right up with uh, concrete blocks just to get the load off of these floor joists. Yeah. This is dangerous. I and agree. It, it can't take the pressure. Water has been running down these stairs for years. The concrete has been absorbing all that water and the foundation's crumbling. A new concrete block wall will have to be built along the existing foundation, turning the corner and filling in the old doorway to support this side of the house. And I'll stop hitting that wall. Yeah, please, <laughs> at least while I'm down here. We've had to go out in the corner to bypass this piece of crap and tie into the block wall that's good on this side. Okay, that's a lot of dough to fix this area. Oh Never mind God. anything else. We anticipated some costs, but not, nothing close to this. I don't have any vent stacks going through the roof in that vicinity. It's safe to say that this thing is not vented. First thing we gotta do is get some short posts up here to take the okay. weight, because this is uh, not safe. 
So how far does this go? They're just coming in now and putting up the jack posts to support all the joists. Essentially, that's all we're doing is putting a temporary beam inside, which now the house is supported on until we put our final support in against here, which is will be our uh, our new block wall. We've dismantled this retaining wall that was on the exterior of the staircase. We've removed the stairs out of the way. There was a lot of concrete along here that we also removed. Right now, I have it trenched from the inside of the house all the way to here. We're going to do our new footings 20 inches wide by one feet deep. Ideally, to fill this door in, we should have been able to just remove the door, do some masonry on the edges, and re-block in. But the foundation wall in this house is eroding pretty bad where you can see. Now, the repair that I have to do is I have to do an interior block wall for about 12 feet of this side of the wall. So I'm gonna actually bring a wall that comes out about a foot further than this wall, and I'm gonna tie into here. After the cinder blocks go in, they would be parged all the way from the footing up to the grade level. And then after that, we would apply some waterproofing membranes to keep the water out and keep the wall in good shape for centuries to come. What we have done is we installed uh, a wall vent, uh, which is allowed in the renovation uh, cases, um, such as this one. And uh, we are bringing it over to the, uh, uh, just to the bucket. The amount of uh, disruption is, is, is pretty much minimal. One of the basic rules in plumbing is every trap needs to have its own vent. Because there was no venting, and, uh, and the, this kitchen was recently renovated, to run an independent vent and reconnect it to the rest of the venting system in the house would require substantial demolition. Wall vent needs to be installed. It needs to be accessible for maintenance and inspection purposes, and this will solve this problem here. The wall vent is, uh, is pretty much a one-way valve. It allows air to get in, um, and it won't allow any gases to escape. We've dealt with the bathroom and the kitchen venting, tackled, and we're now dealing with the foundation in the back. Feeling pretty good. I think it's time to give Mike a call. So it's perfect weather to be working on a foundation, isn't it? Yeah, having a gaping hole in your house is always fun when it's pouring rain. OK, that's more than I thought. What's up? We got a deteriorating foundation. The problem was, where did it stop? So that's where we had to do the block. We had to keep going with the block until we found out that the foundation was OK. Even six feet in at this point, that wall was saturated. That's what we had to do. They're going to waterproof right around. Double check. So we're going to waterproof to the front. The side, that's right. To here. Right around to come right around the window. Yep. Any other surprises? Well, the roof was done. You know about the roof. Yeah, the roof was done in the front, front porch. Absolutely. We had to reframe it. How so bad was it? It was bad. It was bad. 24 inch on center, everything rotting out. I mean, I had Adam there half a day restructuring the roof. So the home inspector missed all the plumbing. Yeah, missed the plumbing. We still have to tackle plumbing in here. We're going to cut open the floor on the inside after this because the drain is actually connected to the inside. It's actually attached to the sanitary right here. Looks like everybody and their cousin worked on this house. Uh, Damon had already worked outside, and uh, we took the roof off the front porch, took the roof off, and uh, what'd you find? Obviously, your roof was a mess. It had layer upon layer of shingles. We actually started having to pull boards. It was old. It's, what, an 80-year-old house? Yep. So we pulled those. Much to my chagrin, we had to do framing, so we reframed it. Rotting. Wow. Yes, so everything was rotting, <laughs> dry rot, etc. So we reframed it, resheated it, new shingles. Back roof, it peeled apart in his hands. It wasn't even sticking anymore. Oh, and by the way, none of the plumbing was vented. So that means the kitchen was not vented. That means the bathroom, that means the laundry room. None of it was vented. So I'm sure everything went down the drain very slow. We've opened up the bulkhead. We brought our plumbing through, put in the valve there that is an air valve that we, we, we will have an access panel on that, painted to match the wall. And the point is that you can get to that air valve. And that's what we need. I've got an idea for it. I think you'll like. Yeah, he's pretty good with ideas. Lately, <laughs> lately, lately he's, uh, he's kind of freaked me out a bit. I'll be like, hey, that was, that was, that's not a bad idea. <laughs> uh, we repaired the plumbing under the sink? Absolutely. Let's go down to the basement. I'll show you the basement, OK? Sure. OK. Oh, my god. There's a hole in your wall. 
Oh my God. So Martin has fixed all the plumbing on this side because it was wrong. We have a proper run now. What has happened in this whole corner, actually right to the end, is that it's deteriorated. Uh, the strength of it is no good. We're going to temporarily support it. We're going to build a new wall on the inside to structurally support this. Move any electrical that's in the end, insulate the proper ends. We're closing off the door. And all new footings have been poured for this, by the way. We've had to go out in the corner to bypass this piece of crap and tie into the block wall that's good on this side. We're going to waterproof it from the corner here totally around this side, right around to the front of the house. OK, that's a lot of dough to fix this area, oh never mind God. anything else. We anticipated some cost, but not nothing close to this. It's scary, but uh, you know we're, we're glad you guys are here to help. Good thing is it's not that bad. I don't have to take the house down. <laughs> yeah. That's a good sign. I'm not taking your house down. I just can't believe that something so big and so expensive could be missed in a, in a home inspection. We didn't anticipate putting any money into our roof based on uh, what our home inspector said. And I was worried about the cost associated with replacing a roof. But now, seeing the extent of the problems in the basement, that's peanuts compared to what we have to deal with downstairs. It was all pretty much a shock. We've got some siding work left to do. We've got to flash the uh, chimney on the flat roof. Well, the Bowen brothers have nearly finished building us a concrete block support wall for this corner of the house. Now we'll dig all the way around the corner to waterproof it properly. We have new block, no waterproofing on it at all. So basically what these guys are doing is waterproofing what we've repaired. OK, that's more than I thought. What's up? We had to keep going with the block until we found out that the foundation was OK. I just can't believe that something so big could be not revealed to me. It was all pretty much a shock. The chimney, like any other protrusion in the roof, is gonna always going to be a weak point. This here, we we're just putting a brand new mortar. The old mortar was just, again, it was just old. It just broken down, deteriorated over time. All concrete absorbs water. Done properly, you should be able to shed it and move it out of the way before it has a chance to uh, actually permeate all the way down and do any damage. Steve's going to be coming up to flash all this here to, to help block these water points here. Well, the pipe from the old floor drain in the basement used to flow outside before coming back into the house and connecting with the main drain. Obviously, I capped the outside drain. So now, to connect the floor drain to the main drain, I have to break up the floor. We can concrete this by the end of the day, and that is my goal. After we applied the aqua block membrane and the fiberglass mesh, we cover that with a three mil poly. The last part we do on that is the drainage board membrane. The drainage board membrane keeps a separation between the soil and the actual compound. So when all goes well, the water stays right in front of the drainage board membrane. But in the wintertime, when the snow's built up on the house and we get a flash thaw, the water's going to melt and it has a chance of getting in behind the drainage board membrane. At that point, the actual waterproofing membrane, which is right on the wall, tighter than paint, it has no chance to get in behind that membrane and it'll keep the basement dry. After that membrane's installed, it's just a question of bringing in some new soil and refilling the area where the old staircase was. Well, right behind this wall right now, we have plumbing going on. Kate has dug her way to freedom. She's trenched everything for the plumbers, and they're in the middle of disconnecting everything and putting in new plumbing. We did have a break in our stack, so it was a good call on Martin's part. He remembers scoping and seeing a little bit of damage there. So sure enough, when Kate dug it out, it just fell apart. He's changing everything to new. While I have this all exposed, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this part of the storm line and I'm going to connect it to the floor drain, which will then discharge it over to the sanitary line. I also have a cast iron stack, which uh, doesn't look too good. 
This is one of the weakest spots in, in, a, in, a, in a drain system underground because you're changing it from a cast iron uh, to clay material. It's only you know a compound that was applied, uh, a cement or cement type product. What we're going to do is we're going to take it uh, from this connection and we're going to remove it all. The above ground portion we're going to replace it with ABS material, and then uh, below ground we're going to install a white PVC, which is uh, the current uh, material that's approved by code. So when obviously the plumbing is done, otherwise I wouldn't be putting concrete in. I'm feeling really good. We're almost there. One of the most important things we've actually done today was take care of the wine rack. And that was really one of our only solutions to the plumbing issue and the venting up in the kitchen. Without ripping down the walls in that kitchen, that was really the only option we had. So I had to come up with some kind of an idea. I came up with a wine rack and it solves the plumbing coming through the back of the cabinet. I'm happy. We're gonna make the wine rack here out of an oak veneered particle board. Just kind of match the, uh, the oak cabinets that they have in there as well. We'll stain it to match. It's a small job, it'll take an hour just to get it popped together. Nice little detail for the kitchen, something they need. That'll look good. It did its job, it, uh, it hides the pipe well. The stain is a match. Looks like it's supposed to be here. We're fixing the floor. We patched it, it looks like crap, I wanna fix it. So we're just gonna put this down. It cleans up the surface down there and it gives them something nice to walk on. What we're laying here is basically it's a durable pad. You use these for workout rooms, uh, you use them for rooms where you're, you're, there's a lot of traffic. You can't destroy this stuff. So it's gonna give you just a tough floor that you can abuse. They're gonna be bringing stuff down here, they're gonna be storing stuff down here. We have concrete patches after concrete patches. This is just gonna take out some of the unevenness and make it look like a nice little floor down here and they can abuse the hell out of it. Pulling down the old siding and uh, replacing it with some new siding and just uh, fix it up. Well, this is my favorite part of the job. We're tying off loose ends. We have smart screen going on right now. Just finishing it up, they had to do the lower roof here. Nice job, finish off the downspouts. I see they've trimmed off the piece here. Now this was just something I wanted to fix for them. It was, you can see the insel brick here. I believe it's where the old uh, electric meter was. Uh, we fixed that. We just patched it so no water got into the house. That's done, nice. Now we're onto the siding in the back here. Just finishing off in the corner here. We just have to get this side to get the windows capped. At the very end, when they're done, I get some river rock in here, some new patio stones. It's gonna look beautiful. There's rules. We need to follow the rules. These are good rules. These are practices that uh, makes a safe home for you and your family. And uh, when you break those rules, the consequences are not good. What don't I see? Vent. This is just like plain ugly, man, and plain stupid. Well, I guess people in jail would wish they built foundations like that. It did its job. It, uh, it hides the pipe well. The stain is a match. Looks like it's supposed to be here. It's gonna look beautiful. Mr. Bennett. Mike Holmes. How you doing, man? Good to see you. That yeah, looks good. Yeah, what do you think? Not bad. That is a very good idea. Yeah. Take use of the space, and what better than putting wine there. That's right. Fix the plumbing here. Plumbing's fixed. How about the foundation? The foundation's really good. It's done. Uh, they had it sided today. It's flashed. 
I noticed actually walking up that they capped the uh, sign in there in between right. the old mast there. That's nice. It's a gaping hole. Why not? Like, let's solve any water issues we see at the at the time, right? They were here. They did it. They did a good job. Any issues? The only issue is it's hot, and we're ready to give this back. It Do they have an air conditioner? Good. It doesn't feel like it right now, does it? <laughs> I think the doors have been open and closed for a while, so the air conditioner is on. It'll take a while to kick back in. Have they seen it? We've covered it every night, whether they peaked or not. No weather issues in the bathroom? Nope. I have the reports from plumbers, HVAC, electrical. It's all ready for the homeowners. We're ready to go. I'm a happy man. Me too. As usual. Thanks, Good buddy. job, man. Thanks, man. Let's get him. Okay. <laughs> You're playing on a computer again every time I see you on the computer. <laughs> Looks like our house. Keith. You guys are the guests. Good to see ya. Kaylin, how you doing, doll? Hey, Keith. How you doing? See you, David. You too. Hi, Kaylin. Hey. How are you? Good. Well, it's all done. Why don't we just walk in the door? We'll start in the kitchen, work our way around, and uh, probably end up in the front. Sounds good. Okay. Excited. Brand new kitchen. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> good finish. It's nice just work. Just kidding. This, this is this stuff I love. Is things that we some things we don't have to touch, some things we do have to touch. Now, we looked at the uh, this was Damon's idea. Looked at the wine bottle there and the glasses hanging over. Yeah. And we did break <laughs> open and run the plumbing vent out through the vertical bulk here. A rack for your wine bottles. Oh, that's fantastic, guys. Well, with making sure there's an access panel for the wall vent that's in there without breaking the rest of your house going through the roof. We're thrilled with, with the, uh, the little touch of the wine rack and to have something handmade to remember everyone by and remember this, this whole experience. There was no mortar left on the top of your chimney. There was gaping holes, and it was just allowing water to pour right in. So I had our roofers reflash the bottom of it because even the roofing job, they, what they did is they torched membrane right onto the chimney itself, and there was gaps there too. So he did a flashing at the bottom, and I had Adam actually bring the peak back to what it was before, which is put cement on, slope it away from everything, uh, fill the holes, fill all the lines, basically by repointing the chimney, and it's good as new. Oh, wow, that's fantastic. So it's not just a, 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 a wine rack, you yeah, got a new yeah, chimney. Yeah, it doesn't stop there. <laughs> this is great, we got a new chimney. I love this. <laughs> Let's great. look at the basement yeah, where sure. the real big problem is. Sure. Which is no longer a problem, by the way. Do you have air conditioning? <laughs> oh my. This is a lot different than when we last saw it. <laughs> well, thing, I, I love Damon. He likes to do little extra things. He told, yeah. he told me about what he put on the floor. And uh, it's just a rubberized floor. You snap it together. It's really a good yeah. idea. And it looks good, doesn't it? Oh, it makes it look so great. Yeah, so much better. Your floor was so uneven down here. I mean, yeah. you've had, I don't know if you had an old bathroom here at one point, but there was definitely something right here. And look at the new wall. Yeah, that's uh, that looks amazing. It looks better than the hole that we saw last time. <laughs> so that looks great. They dug it back to where about the stairs was and then made sure they waterproofed it right to the front. Corner. This is going to solve a lot of your problems, especially what the other guys did on the outside yeah. of the house. They really helped solve the water issues. But this will show just how much damage water can do. The new basement looks fantastic. Uh, I guess Kaylin will be expecting some more handiwork coming out of that yeah. basement than there was. But uh, it looks fantastic. It's just cleaned up really nicely now. And uh, we love it. I mean, you lose a door, but so what? You gain so much with the structure and with uh, you know the peace of mind, knowing that your house isn't going to collapse. This floor has actually been ripped open and really? the plumbing redone and cemented down, and you have a new drain there. And we have one coming out of the concrete, and your drain goes right into it instead of it crawling along the floor like most right. people do. Having it all fixed now, it looks really good. There's no door. There's no drain at the bottom of the stairs that was incorrectly hooked up. It's phenomenal down here, guys. Picked up this the structure is... here off the wall. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. Yep. All new plumbing, and you gotta love these guys. You yep. know, we tied in the cast iron pipe there, and he fixed it up, and new plumbing. Let's say, yes, it's new, but proper plumbing. Fantastic. Uh, oh, guys, this is, uh, this is phenomenal. There was also a, a two-foot split in your stack, and that's another reason we broke up this floor here as well to repair your stack. Changing the plumbing directly up to the sink here, because we did have problems within the sink itself, and these are things that I noticed. You know, you have a home inspector come in, he didn't look at it, or he didn't know about it. There's rules. We need to follow the rules. These are good rules. These are practices that uh, makes a safe home for you and your family. And uh, when you break those rules, the consequences are not good. Absolutely. And then when it's not really, it wasn't brought to your attention by people that are supposed to bring it to your attention, then the consequences are even heavier because it's more money that you're going to spend that you didn't expect. Makes sense to me. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, I'm really hot. <laughs> <laughs> Nice neighborhood. 
nice neighbor. She got some Absolutely. nice people on the street. There was yeah, someone across the street who kept coming over, giving the, giving the guys drinks. Yeah. Oh, they're great. coming over and saying hi. We've met so many people through this process. Just everyone coming, right? see how it's going, yeah. and see how everyone is. Yeah, yeah it's. Uh, a phenomenal neighborhood. On this roof here, the guys, uh, uh, they actually pulled the roof, didn't they? They did pull the roof. They had no choice. They pulled it and redid it for you. It was peeling off the corner. When Steve got here, he just said, I don't know what's wrong with this roof. Took the corner, peeled it off. So it wasn't an exterior finish. It was a uh, torch on, but they might have done it in the rain where it didn't adhere properly, a little bit of moisture under it. That's all it takes for a, uh, for a torch on. You get a little bit of moisture under it, it won't stick at all. So no matter how much heat they apply, it will not grab. And so. we kind of recommend to make sure you put down a fire rated board and then torch the board because that's what it's designed for, two purposes, right? It, it, it gives it a fire rating so when they torch it, they're not going to burn your house down accidentally. And it also it grabs it to adhere it. So it's a, a smart move. So look at, <laughs> I, I do see eaves, troughs, and downspouts. That's new. New eaves, troughs, and downspouts. I know through. they did it, but I yeah. see it. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it. It sparkles. Yes. Look at your neighbors, it look at yours. Happen. You can tell the difference. Come on back here. The guys did some river rock and a little bit of patio stone. You remember what was here, the monstrosity, the Frankenstein-ish <laughs> roof thing you had here. <laughs> Looking through that window was sort of, it was almost embarrassing for us. To, and we almost had to explain it to everyone. Well, you know, this is a cover. We'll do something about it maybe. But, you know, uh, let's move on kind of thing. And now it just, it looks great out there. It looks fantastic. River rock's a great idea, eh? Yeah, it sort of cleans it up. We were thinking of mulch, some soil, this to me is just is a better finish. The new look at the side of the house is it's great. It opens it up and it makes the backyard seem like it's bigger. And you can see where they brought the foundation out here and that was really to tie into this section here because the corner was no good and that's the only reason it's out further. Taking this area out is what they had to because they had to tie to the wall here and bring it out and bringing it back. This was all formed and poured to tie back in to make it look like a nice square foundation. If you notice, the new flashing goes up underneath the new siding. How much siding did they do? They went up how far? From here down. And really, it's a great match. They did a great job on it. When you bring in the right people, the right job gets done. It is 100% waterproof. It is not going to leak. I like hearing that. <laughs> We've had enough problems with leaks in basements, so I'm yeah. <laughs> happy that this one's nice watertight. Let's go to the front roof. Let me show you. Now, this roof was different. This was the culprit of why we came here in the first place. And just how rotten was it? It was pretty rotten. We had to actually replace the most of it. We restructured it, resheeted it, and then reshingled it. Well, it looks really good. And I understand that you guys just had your happy anniversary. Yes, yes. we did. Yeah, uh, just on Sunday. First year? First yeah, year, first yeah. Uh, exciting, adventurous year, yeah. Well, happy anniversary. Thanks very much. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Happy anniversary. Thanks very much. Yeah. This oh, is wow. just a great little way of saying <laughs> uh, we are done. Adam built the wine rack. That's amazing. <laughs> we really appreciate it. There we go. Happy anniversary. Thank you so much. <laughs> to everyone. Fun. Cheers. Good job, Cheers. guys. Cheers. Cheers. Congratulations. So Good job. Good job, you guys. And happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is hot in here. It is hot everywhere in here. Yeah. Every floor. Basement. It's supposed to be cool down here. Do you have air conditioning? We do, yeah. We're going to crank it right now. Yeah, nothing. <laughs> Who the hell turns off the air conditioning? The day we yeah. leave. Is that the sound, man? Yeah. That's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> they told us. They told us to turn it off. They said, no, oh, we don't care about those guys. We turn off you the think air we don't know what we're doing, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dee Dee and Rick bought their dream home in the perfect neighborhood. They did the right thing. They brought in a home inspector. Home inspector gave it two thumbs up. The real estate agent knew the inspector. Hmm. The house was bought. Previously, four months renovated and sold. It's sure starting to look like a flip. Now, what did the home inspector miss? Obviously, a few things, because I'm here. I'm going to have to take a look. I'll find out, but I'll make it right. I grew up in this neighborhood. Uh, I was born and raised just about four blocks north of here, so it had always been kind of a desire of mine to get back into this area, and this was an opportunity for us to get back down this way. Came through for a viewing and just fell in love with it, and he said, oh, there's absolutely nothing I have to do with this house. So some of the selling features that really attracted us to this home uh, was, was the privacy, you know, with the setback from the road. Dee Dee likes to garden. I guess we consider this a four-level side split. It's got lots of nice layers. And we get to do things like play pool together. They had uh, redone the kitchen. So when we came through for the viewing, it was like, oh my god, there's all this space. The kitchen was the selling point. And it was <laughs> like, just perfect. It was perfect. Yeah. We got a home inspection done through the recommendations of our realtor. We never really actually met the home inspector guy. 
he just showed up one day, left us a little book and said, there you go. We started discovering that there were some issues with the home that we felt should have been picked up by the home inspection that wasn't. Well, hello. hello. You must be Rick. I am. Hi. And you must be Dee Dee. I am. Nice Pleasure. to meet you. So, you know, we have the issues with ventilation over the over the stove, and, and Deidre likes, likes to cook, uh, and that's an issue. For me, we have a gas stove. Nice. I can see why uh, we purchased the house. I kind of like this. That's a great look. Any issues here? Well, the fan doesn't work. I did not read about this in the report. This is not the way to vent. A stove. What they did was they ran duct line. You can easily see it. I don't need my flashlight for that. It appears to be up through the center here, both points going up. There's no motor, there's no nothing. You don't put it in this method. So this now it's little things that I see, who did the work and how was it covered up, because it looks really good. When we first came into the house to view it, um, you know, we had realized that, you know, it was it was fully furnished. And we thought, geez, it's so someone's living here. Uh, and we found out afterwards that it was just a staged event for the day and uh, that, you know, after we made an offer with it, you know, they said, well, you can, you can buy any of the furniture too. So with gas, yes, we, we really do want the exhaust out. You're using it, but you're not vented. Correct. Right. Yeah, because you have to cook, right? I think they had it four months. They had it four months and then they uh, did all the stuff. All the neighbors kept talking that the guys were great and they kept borrowing the neighbors' tools and whatnot and all these guys are great and I was like, oh. <laughs> When I read the report, what it said about this vent, this hood, was that it was vented directly through the roof. That's all it said. So uh, was there a proper hood above the stove? Yes. How was it vented through the roof? Is this proper? No. There's no hood in here, and this is all a, a supposed custom uh, ventilation unit. But what I'm seeing is, is that there is no fireboard or no stoppage to the small little attic space that is there, and I can clearly see the insulation. No, we don't want that. That's a fiber up there, right? It's fiberglass. And since there's a hole in here that I can stick my camera up, it allows the droppings or the fibers to come in. And even when you're cooking, I think the last thing you actually want is fiberglass in your meal. You know, knowing there was a flip, we thought at least if they're bringing, you know, qualified people in to do the work. And when you look around the home, uh, it looks like there's some quality workmanship going on. So there's two problems here. One is possible weight load. This is a solid stone. And that's right on top of the countertop. So if you ever had to pull the countertop, what do you have to do? Take this down. Mm -hmm. It doesn't slide out from underneath it. No. This is not the way to do this. The upstairs shower off the master bedroom, uh, we can't use it right now because it has some water issues that's causing problems uh, in another room in the house. Below this, there's some issues with the ceiling now. And we were suspect that it's coming from this area. There's something going on here. Well, the problem with this is that water will penetrate grout. Think of concrete as, as it absorbs water. Now, it's only going to stop it for so long before it pulls it in. This should have been a solid piece of uh, marbleite, same as the bottom here. There's a lot of obvious things that the inspector missed. We don't want loose pipes like this. We want the holes filled in behind it, which they're not. You know, if water can blast them, it hits back on the wall, it drips down, it goes in the hole. Where the hell's it leaking from? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten places maybe. Eleven. Look at, look at this. See the grout across the top here? This will never work. This should be a marbleite piece that continues out over the edge so we can caulk underneath it. That's not the way to do that. This is an ABS pipe that comes up through the floor. Could it be leaking from here? The answer is absolutely yes. There is a trap there because I can see water. Problem is, that's not the way you do a drain in the shower floor. Wrong, wrong. Well, when we had the home inspector, when he came over to our house that we were selling, I had asked him, I said, what's the water pressure like? Because I always, I'm, I forgot to do it when we came through the house. And he looked at me and he says, I don't know. He says, I'm not about to get wet. You know, we were hoping that yeah. any issues that may have been involved with the house, the home inspection guy would have picked up. At least we were hoping. Did you even see if there was permits pulled on the house? No. no. I think that we need to up the industry of home inspections and make a phone call. Yeah. And to the best of our knowledge, was there a permit pulled on this house? 
the listing, it said, Reno, completely renovated, right? Yeah. It's brand new, yeah. brand new electrical, brand new. I'm just curious, is that what it said? Pretty much. Because yeah. that's normally how they sell houses, yeah. Yeah. right? And while if that's true, where's the proof that it was actually done properly? You know, if you know, we met Mike, I know he's pissed off, but that's just pissed us off now, too, because it's, uh, yeah. this is something that I think shouldn't happen. So we're just glad he's here. Oh, newly renovated. You're going to love it. It's bling bling furniture. These are things that make me go, I don't know about this house. And I'm seeing it crack all over your ceiling, both on the back of the house and on the front of the house. We do have cracking within the drywall. It is in the report as standard. It's a new home. This should not be standard. Uh, whether or not they structured it properly, I'll find out. I mean, look at that drywall. You can see, looking up, you can see a crack across here, a crack down here, a crack across there, and it's getting, you know, it makes you wonder. Did they use any tape when they plastered? One of the things we noticed first off when we, we just moved in the place is when we we're walking up to, there's a, a short flight of stairs going up to the kitchen that's tiled, ceramic tile. They're all loose, every one of them. Well, if you notice in an older house, usually when you walk down the stairs, what do you hear? Creak, 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 yeah. which means we have movement. And if you go and try and put tiles over that, they break, and I mean, it looks good, right? But it doesn't last long, so right. no. it becomes an issue. Now, what do you hear? Hollow. It's hollow. It's hollow yeah. Now, what that means is it's completely not bonded no longer, and I'm sure every one of them are the every, same. Every time we vacuum, we're vacuuming up more grout. Oh, that's not a surprise. Well, the house inspector told us to just add a little bit of grout, and it'll be fine. Oh, geez, yeah, for sure. And it'll yeah. crack again. I love the French doors. We, uh, we picked up on a, on a water stain mm -hmm. when we first moved in here. This is the bathroom upstairs. That yes. would have been the, the ensuite. I and, know, OK, I, there was nothing in the report. You missed it. I think you told us to paint over it. Yeah, he said, paint over it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So we thought, That's, I don't think so, but anyway. It's the little things I'm looking at that tell me they fixed it up, put the house up for sale. We call that fluffers, right? Because mm -hmm. he wanted to dress it up, put the house up for sale, and two beautiful people come in and buy the house. Looks awesome, and it truly does look really good. But we have a problem. I'm going to go through your house. I'm going to use special tools, and I'm kind of nervous because something tells me I'm going to find a lot more than I wanted to. It's a shame. This is a lot of nice work that truly looks good. I can see how deceiving it is for the homeowners to come in and say, wow, look at this place. You know, you can walk all the way around this beautiful centerpiece. I already know that we're going to be opening that up. I kind of really like it, but it's not the right way of doing it. Rather than just tackling and saying, you know what, take this down. We have a lot in here. I saw the thermostat, the fireplace, cable, lighting, switches. So there's a lot in this cavity of the fireplace area. And instead of just like wrecking it all, maybe we go in through the ceiling since I know I'm going to be doing some repairs and just pop up and take a look and see what's up there. And I'm just seeing if I see any inconsistencies with the insulation up there. And so far, visually, it looks good. I can easily see the skylights. There's a skylight. There's a reflection of myself in the glass. And if this doesn't see through glass, it actually gives you an improper reading on the glass. But it shows how good it works, because it shows my body. And I'm kind of hot, actually. Not really, but you know. All they did was they came in this room, put in some pod lights, new trim, new baseboard, new carpet, and painted it. Amazing what paint does. This is beautiful. Large washer and dryer. This works for me. Oh, oh, come on. Not the way to put in a laundry tub. This was not in the report. OK, we have a beautiful laundry tub. Well, what do I see here? The drain is straight up with no trap that leads into what? It's a clay pipe that's in the floor. I think I can smell it, the methane gas coming out of the floor. That's going to be a pain in the butt, and this is minor. When you start adding things together, methane gas exhausting out of cat gas, bringing into the furnace, which should have been ducted outside for fresh air. I don't know. That doesn't sound like a good equation to me. 
it's just hilarious to see this, to actually have a little sump box that everything runs into to go into the drain. Now I'm really terrified with all the plumbing in here. Did they punch new drains in the floor? And if they did some of the plumbing wrong in the house, is there plumbing wrong in the floor? That oil tank, they should have removed. That was in the report. Every time I go into a house that has an oil tank, I seem to be the lucky culprit that gets to remove it. Look at this. Look at the buildup across the bottom here. It is starting to leach out right there. And that's something. That's why it smells so strong. You know, why take it out if you don't have to? Nobody wants to be responsible for it. The smells. Is that dangerous? <sighs> that's oil. Holmes, looks good, eh? Look around. It looks absolutely beautiful. Yeah, looks are deceiving. I see cracking. Uh, there's a lot of cracking, a lot of cracking, which might explain that the drywallers were not good and the painter was fabulous. <laughs> if we look on this side, we can see the open cavity. That's the two by four studded wall here that is totally open and engaged. Oh, yeah. Fire code for a gas stove. Yeah, because you have a grease fire, it is going to reach This is a capstone, so this may be the lighter natural stone that they made. And you know what? We may just end up ripping the whole freaking thing down. Once these are open, yeah. we'll have a lot more, but I don't want to come back here until you've had everyone in. No worries. Yep. Okay, give me a day. Okay? You're going to need a couple days, pal. At least two. Okay. Open house surgery, that's what it is. You see that? <laughs> ABS right to the top. Yeah. Not proper drain. No. Come on in, guys and girls. This is your home for the next three weeks. It's a very, very nice house. So right off the bat, let's protect everything. I want plastic on the furniture. Okay, so no dust gets anywhere. I just want a path right here. Okay. Whoa. Mike wants to make sure that these are the correct pot lights. He wants to make sure there's enough insulation in here. He wants to check out structure. He wants to check out everything. We can't do it. There's no attic here. This is a vaulted ceiling. So the only way we have is these little access holes here. So we're going to open up and see. Vapor barrier and insulation. Shocking. Do I want to jump up and down that somebody finally did their job properly? That uh, they, you know, they put vapor barrier and insulation? No. This is the way you have to do it. I'm not that excited. What I'm actually more interested in is to see what they did wrong. Oh, we have the right pot lights. That is a great sign. Bravo, gentlemen. They have proper insulation. To me so far, it looks like it's been done properly, but we still have to find out why the ceiling is cracking. MJ, do me a favor, take down the plate, take down the wood, take down the light. Frank's gonna be here soon, so he has to check the electrical as well, okay? Really, do Girl. Yeah. Want to give me a hand? Well, right off the bat, I see some nasty electrical. All these right here, that's supposed to be within the box. That's not supposed to be out of the box. OK, Frank, are you there, bud? Just want to show you. Hey, man, look at this. I just wanted to show you this. Take a look at what they've done with these pot lights above. Are you kidding me? No. You see the fraying that's already happening on that yeah. cable? Yeah. Okay, that's from this cable rubbing against the, the, the metal, which is sharp. Right. So this is just a matter of time. It's gonna short out against the metal. This is grounded through this cable, which is gonna cause it dead short. Well, look at the three lines just hanging there in the middle of nowhere, just all bundled up right here. Disgusting, look, it's look, called look an open air connection. You look nervous all of a sudden. Yeah, because if I find it like that, where else am I gonna have problems? Absolutely. Okay, we'll start off like you said. We'll, we'll turn off the power here and get rid of this. Thank you. We're 
going to drop this ceiling right here. I want stuff on the floor, and I want the couches protected and that TV protected. Come on in here. Okay, this is it. Do you smell that? Sorry, it's the kitty litter. Yeah, I, thought, I smell you know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not gas. It's a different kind of gas. This is our intake. This <laughs> a little short, maybe. No fresh air. It's a lot short. Um, it's mechanical room. Yeah. Also a laundry room. This needs to be vented outside. Look at this where the drain actually comes out. They've actually put it into a pump and they pumped it about, what, six inches six. to a foot? Yeah. They pumped it over to a foot. Do you need that? I mean, could you just put a line right through? Yeah. Just, we'll disconnect the weird. pump. Okay. Um, we'll tee it all in and we'll just bring a line to here. Thank you very much. You did that whole thing already? Holy, that was fast. I'm just like, I'm like lightning, man. That's for you. Thank you. Get your head. Look at the water. I was sitting on that. <laughs> that was uh, held together pretty well. You know what I don't see? The drain. That's right. We're gonna have to figure out where this is. Oh, here's a copper pipe. While the water was sitting there, doesn't necessarily mean that's exactly where it's coming through. It's just no brainer why there's a leak down below. The water has a clear ability to penetrate in between the ABS and the grout. Uh, grout is not uh, waterproof, tiles are not waterproof, so I don't believe a licensed plumber would do such thing, to be honest, because this is a fundamental error. Uh, and anybody that has some, some knowledge of plumbing, uh, even an apprentice, uh, would not take it to, the, to such an extreme in terms of, you know, making a mess out of it. Once the tank is cut and removed, all the piping, the tank, the copper, everything goes to the scrapyard. Everybody says there's no oil in the tank, and there's always oil in the tanks. Hey, Stu, how are you doing? The gauge on the top of the tank showed quarter full. It was actually half full. It was half full. 573 liters we took out of here in oil and sludge. 573 liters. Not of only sludge. that, when we start agitating the tank, cutting it up to get yep. it out, two holes appeared in the bottom. Well, how come we don't see staining here? Well, the rust kind of held it together, so it was ready, pitted, and ready to go. If, within a year, that would have drained out in here. We're lucky we took it out at this point. We have a leak, boys. We have a leak in more than one spot. Okay, can we shut that water off? Of course. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thanks, guys. Adam, you still holding? Three cats in the house, and we have like a mouse hotel up here. City cats, I'm telling you. Lazy. Mr. Bennett. Yes, sir. What I'm thinking is, how do we keep this bulkness? I like that the lights are centered yep. in, in this. Now, if we move it all back, so it may actually be right to the back of this cabinet, right? Yep. Are you okay with taking out some stones and tying it all back Worst in? case scenario, the answer is yes. Then we're gonna put in a big, beautiful stainless steel hood. I've never seen a fireplace in a range built like this in my life. And can I fix it? Absolutely. I know we can fix it. I know we can bring it back to what they're gonna love without changing the whole look of it. I'm uh, very sorry that we made a mess of your house. Uh, it it kind of looked like a doctor's office, to be honest with you, <laughs> or a contamination room, because it was just plastic everywhere. And it was plastic rooms trying to protect all your furniture. The idea was to do an inspection to see whether or not everything was up to code. We did check. There is no permits. There was a handful of contractors in here that cared, did it right. Without a permit, they can easily cut corners. But we don't know unless we do the investigation. Now, I've been haunting myself in my sleep on how I'm going to fix this issue. Uh, once Damon had pulled down the plate, we can easily see, let me just show you this. We can easily see the way they did the structure. So to come over and just take a quick look. See how there's the two by fours opening is in here? Mm. There's exhaust fans in the duct lines that didn't work. And these electrical connections were just like this up inside, which mm. is totally unacceptable. 
So they had fans, and there, were, there are as booster fans in the duct system, but they didn't work. So I'm, I'm gonna come up with something here to, to fix this. I still wanna keep this look because it really works for me. It is, it's something that uh, I can tell that's why you bought the yeah. house. Yeah. Come on downstairs. So we did open up underneath the bathroom. Now we see we definitely had leaks here. Now this indicates that the leaks here are at the front of the shower stall exactly where I said. We also have leaks at the drain. So it's two locations. So we have to fix the bottom of your shower stall. We have to fix the drain in it. Now there's enough work just doing that to warrant it. That's a holy crap factor. You know? yeah. It's just, do we pull the glass? Do we actually take it all down? But the, again, we'll do more work. We have to solve it. Let's take a look downstairs, okay? okay. I have a question. Did you install that sink? No. Okay. So this, the home inspector has definitely missed things that are very clear. It is his job to look under all sinks, make sure the drains are fine. Um, there's a lot of things that we, we definitely have to fix. So we're going to pick and choose the, the, the hard things to fix and solve the problems for you. And then once again, I'm going to give you a list of the little things uh, that you can do on your own. We're still investigating. We've been, uh, you know, we talked last night a little bit over dinner. We're going, she's like, I wonder what he's going to find tomorrow. You know, why are there holes in the ceiling? What's, what are they found there? We're just, we're like, oh, crap, now what? So. Relax. It's going to be a couple weeks of hell. No worries. I'm Thank sorry. You. And if it gets okay. too much, you know, maybe you can find a hotel or something. <laughs> Put your stuff down when you get up here. Uh, I want furniture moved. I want to know why these are cracking, Carl. I want us to tackle all the drywall issues today. OK, we know there's no backing on a lot of it. I want you to cut open holes, find out what's going on. Things we're going to be tackling today. I'm going to be tackling drywall. I started to see cracking. I started worrying about that. I thought it was structure. It's not structure. It's bad drywall. Hey, dude, what's going on? There's yeah. no, uh, there's no back. Just put tape on it. No, and there's nothing even backing it up on the butt joints. Okay, let me think here. Is there another way I can solve this without taking everything down? I mean, I used wood screws too. Huh? For what? They're drywall screws or wood screws instead of sheet metal. Did they? Yeah. You know, we're just trying to do some nice things by doing a couple of patches, fixing some cracks in their ceiling. And it's the crap we uncover every single time. For proper installation, the section where two sheets of drywall meet should have a joist behind it for support. In this case, they used a resilient channel, which is a leveling system, but it was installed wrong. None of the joints are supported, which allowed the drywall to flex and crack at the seams. So that's why everything's cracking, basic drywalling. Damon, how's it going, Martin? <laughs> what is that? Actually, that's a sewer line. And, and it's, it's clogged. And it's clogged. I get uh, water setting there and... Uh, You're kidding me. Yeah. Everything's cracking above and on the walls. Like, who would do that? That's, that's, it's frustrating. Take it down. Take this all down. This, the second floor drain, it's completely gone. It's broken. This uh, one here? Yeah, it's filled with sand, so it's got absolutely no drainage. I would classify that as investigative procedure to open this up, you know, find out exactly what's broken and the extent of it. OK, so we're breaking up the floor. So. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. Drywall down. Come on, come on, come on. This whole shower was done improperly. This is good. This is how you want your drywall to be. Crumbly and damp. And I see mold. I've got soaking wet drywall. I mean, at least they used a membrane. The membrane was able to hold the water out of damaging more downstairs. Hello, Carl? Yes, I need you upstairs pronto. Thank you. It wasn't connected. 
Hey, good news, man. There's no signs of leaking anywhere but below this. So I'm thinking it was coming from the sill here, the sill there, and from the shower pan. What it was doing, the pan was holding so much water because they did waterproof the pan. As soon as it got past the tile, the rubber membrane was actually doing its job, holding the water in, and was wicking up the drywall. Baby, got it. Put a mold on that. Let me see. Turn around. All right. Ah. Now look at the water under there. Look at how soaked that is. That is just saturated. Here. You know, with a proper drain. You know how they do it, right? They have a yeah. clamp on the bottom. What happens is your flange goes right over top of this membrane so that it's watertight. Look at this. They actually cut a hole around for the pipe and left it like that. In the big scheme of things, is that range a big deal to me anymore? I don't think so. That's a, a small potatoes at this point. I mean, after what I'm dealing with in the basement, the plumbing leak in the, the, plumbing leak in the shower, for Christ's sakes, I forgot. We have a plumbing leak in the damn shower as well. So we're gonna take care of all this. I'm popping ceilings everywhere. It looked like a beautiful house when we came in, didn't it? Take a look again. You think that drain was working? <laughs> wow. I haven't had one freaking good news on this job yet. Right, let's get this jacked open, okay? One useless rubber membrane. Okay, Kate, tack that off from real quick. I need to steal Carlita. We got a million other jobs here. No, it's one of those matrix moments. Your arms should be like almost in slow motion. They're going so fast. Okay, I need Frank, I need Gary. And a prayer. I've got problems everywhere in this whole house. I still have not touched the range. I have not touched the chimney. I have to get to that at this point. I mean, my focus has been so pulled away in every direction, ceiling, basement, bathroom. I mean, I'm everywhere in this house. Got to regain focus, get back to why we're here. I just thought I'd start tackling this. I have my mason coming in a couple of days. I want to actually get this back. I want to get it back to the wall that I talked about. I want to fix any framing that I need to fix, pull all the lines. Now that is why we protect the countertop. Your mortar, when you're doing stone like this, should never just pop off the wall. What you're supposed to do is actually fill your mesh. Me the mesh was proper. What they did is they filled the mesh with cement, let it dry, and then they started putting their stone over top of it. So what's gonna happen is these pieces here, this is what was on the back of the stone. It didn't stick. I was able to pull it off with my hand, which should never happen. The cement on the back of the stone should be bonding to the fresh cement that's in the mesh. Yeah. All right. It's Did you out easier than we expected. Any use of saving it? Uh, this maybe. We'll have no. to see what you uh, what we do you here. Change it. Uh, just to let you guys know what I'm doing, I'm gonna actually cut the tile there, get a marble threshold straight up here, so that you guys have something to go to here. Marble threshold down here and to there. I'm gonna leave that side tile though. All right. You good? Yep. All right. Slowly working our way down. This one's coming too. Yeah. Just hold it. Hey, I got these. Go ahead, grab what you have. Once we took out one piece, this whole thing started coming down. The only thing holding it together was the cement between each stone. This whole wall is floating. 
basically. What's holding it in? They, I think they use these as brick ties. This is not gonna do it. I can basically pull some of these screws out with my fingers. What happens when this wants to give? These aren't gonna hold anything. Inspector should have caught this. Absolutely. When he came in here, all he had to do was look up. One simple step. Reach in, look up. Wow, this is done improperly. That's, you like, know what? This thing you is know just sitting funny? there. No, it's floating. It's floating. It's oh hanging. Oh my god. I've got nothing to say. I've seen it all. Counter's fine. So there's nothing wrong with the countertop at all. At this point, I just have an octopus here. Uh, I have electrical everywhere. I don't even know what's what. Uh, I have junction points. I have some booster fans in here. Shouldn't be done that way. And we have open hanging junctions. What we're doing is we're losing a bit of a wall here and a bit of an overhang. Uh, I think what I do in the end, I think they're going to absolutely love it and it will be safe. Very good. You're on a cement board. I'm really happy about that. Okay, the most important thing right now is getting that pan in the curb in, okay? So All get right. your cement board up here, cement board back there. All right. Yeah. Well, with the cement board in place, proper drain, and a watertight membrane sealing the shower stall, we're ready to tile. You're gonna take the stairs up. We have a floor guy coming in today to uh, get the stairs done for us. He's gonna match up to that one, so the faster you get that off, probably the better. Okay, my friend, you are almost an hour late. Okay, I got here like 20 minutes ago. Did you really? Yes. How could you be tired if you went to bed early? <laughs> Let's get this meshed, because uh, I gotta get Carl taping it, okay? So maybe I'll get you actually doing some fun stuff before you do some other stuff. What's other stuff? We'll see. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm good, yourself? Good. What are you saying about the stone? I've got the stones too much. I hope they match. They might be a little bit different shape. OK. So we're going to mix them with the old ones. Sure. So we don't see other. We were able to salvage almost every single one of them. OK, do you have mesh? Did you bring mesh? Mesh is over there. Oh, great. We started unloading before you guys came out. <laughs> is that right? OK. Yeah. All right, so we're gonna stick on the mesh. Make sure the honey uh, cones are up. So you get a nice bond. There's a ton of mudding to do today. Uh, we got, well, pretty much the entire ceiling to hit. Uh, two coats of Durabond at least because there's the imperfections and all the waves in the ceiling. It's pretty ridiculous. So we're gonna fix all that and try and make it look nice. Nice mortar on it, nice thick coat, and then when you put the stone on, you always squeeze it into place so it sticks, hold it, let go, and that's it. Oh my god! Beautiful, how you doing? Good. Nice job, know. guys. Thanks. That looks great. Appreciate it. Now, you had to incorporate both stones? Oh, yeah. Mixing it all up. The old one, Man. the brand new one. It's looking good, though. That looks right? great. But, yeah. so I have a range coming in, a range hood, coming yeah. in right here. Now, this is gonna affect a little bit, but not too much, right? It's natural stone, what are we supposed to do? You have to let it, you know, the different thicknesses reveal itself, right? Exactly. So what are you thinking, Monday? Monday, Monday finish? Monday for sure, 100%. Monday finish, and that's joints done, everything? Joints done, stones done, cleanups done.
We may just end up ripping the whole freaking thing down. When you do a house flip, it's like you paint. You don't, it's a crapshoot. What is this? You know, how to sight out of mind? It's not a problem if you don't see it. I see it. I got the range hood. It's actually going to be very nice. It's nice and sleek. I like it right there. Can you see that? Is that good? Yep. OK, go. You're here. We're going to get it. I'm still going to be done in two days. Um, pressure's on a little bit. Anything in the attic's got to be insulated. It's, as long as it's insulated, you can use flex in the attic. But it's got to be uh, rigid pipe from here to the attic. We would not be able to do this without the people that work with me. I rely heavily on everyone who's working here. They're very hard workers. Just get this place done, cleaned, ready for Homer to come in. Us revealing two days, OK? Got it? on his way. Last day. I have Craig painting. I've got uh, Steve Graves up on the roof putting some vents in for me. He's got to tie into the range for me. Put a six inch vent up there. Make sure it's nice and sealed. My guy's cleaning. Doing some last minute touch ups with plaster which should have been done yesterday. But they were here very late so I'm going to let them go on this. Uh, we're getting there. Mike should be here soon. I think he's going to love it. We reused the door that uh, was existing um, after the guys removed it. What we basically just did was remeasure for the two side lights. Very nice. You guys almost done? Uh, yeah, just got to put the sweep on and... Last trade today. Right. I love it. I'm ready to give it back. I like the color. Hey, Mike, how you doing? I'd like to say I picked that color, but the homeowner did. I'm liking it. It looks pretty good. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy the way the range turned out, the shower, everything. Let's get him and walk him through it, I think. I okay. can't wait to see it. Great. Good job, buddy. Thank you, my friend. Oh, hello. 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 Dee Dee. How are you? I'm good. Hi, Rick. How are you? Nice how to you see doing, you. Man? Good, good, good to see, see you. Good to see you. Yeah. So, Rick, Mike, are you ready to take your home back? Yes. Let's go. Yeah. You were pumped. Let's go. After you. So oh. now we brought in the towel, guys. So you have all the proper watertight systems underneath. Proper wow. sills. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. So it was leaking from the front. It was leaking from the drain. It was leaking from the side. And all the excussion plates were not sealed. So we did all that. Yeah, they're all sealed up. We found more when we opened this up, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Well, we knew where it was kidding. leaking the most was this corner right here, right against the wall. It was getting right in through the grout lines, soaking your wood, uh, and soaking the drywall, creating mold. No wow. leaks. Beautiful. Let's go downstairs. Wow. Wow. That's beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my God. Now, this actually makes the kitchen look bigger. Holy crap. Look at that, eh? I, I was worried about the kitchen. And, um, uh, you know, because we've got this beautiful stonework here, and I thought, well, what's that going to end up like? I was wow. just going to say, you added more counter space. No, the, by taking <laughs> down the walls, we added more counter space. <laughs> this was all removed. So now the electrical's been repaired. We have a proper exhaust that's insulated directly through the attic, and it's, it's usable. Wow. I was going to say that it works. It works. It actually yeah. works. 
And the good thing is, is that it did not, they did not damage the countertop. Mm -hmm. Not to mention my guys didn't damage it, taking it down and putting it back up again. Mm -hmm. So we got Beautiful. lucky. Absolutely gorgeous. Not bad, eh? They did a lot of things right in their initial renovation. The drywall was not done properly. I wanted to repair the cracks for you. Couldn't repair the cracks without taking it all down. Wow. Perfection. Beautiful. Yeah. Perfection. It looks spectacular. I guess you know you have wood stairs. Oh, oh wood. Oh, <laughs> Matches the other side. Oh, for God's sakes. We repaired all the drywall uh, in, in that wonderful living room yeah. area and made sure it was mold resistant underneath yeah. the shower. We brought in electricians, did everything to code, pulled the permits. I brought in Martin, he scoped the drains. We found that there was two collapsed pipes in the floor, dug it up, put in new drains, and replaced the laundry sink. We brought in the oil tank, guys. You're so lucky. It had two holes in the bottom of it, and what happened is the rust and the sludge actually clogged it. You could have had uh, oil in your no. basement. There's two holes from it sitting there for that long. We brought in our wonderful HVAC guys that ran a fresh air line outside. Not bad, eh? No. That's yeah. a lot of work. Oh, and they did it right. But now you can sit back and relax. Wow, what a relief. What's the matter? <laughs> you happy? Oh, yeah. Well, so that's good then. I'd buy this house all over again. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank Mike and all your crew. You guys have been just spectacular. So we had some shirts made up that had the homes inspection logo on it. We put the name on it, and we put make it right on the back. That is cool. Thank, thank you so you. much, guys. Thank you. Right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. group hug, get in here. Come on. Hey. Group hug. Come on. One, two, three. Make it right.